Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the education credits. It's very important to understand the purpose of the credit in order to put the credit into a context. The purpose of the education credit is to encourage individual to attend higher education institution, universities and colleges. How? Well, if you attend and you pay your tuition, the government would help with that tuition. They will provide you some tax credits. We have two education tax credits that we need to be familiar with. The first one is called the American Opportunity Credit. I'm going to be abbreviating this as AOC. Now, you might know it as HOPE Scholarship Credit in the past, but that's no, they no longer use this term. And we have the Lifetime Learning Credit. Both credits are available for qualified tuition and related expenses. So the credits are available if you pay any tuition and any related fees to the tuition itself. How about books and supplies? Well, books and other course material are eligible for the American Opportunity Credit, but not for the lifetime credit. Because when you attend colleges, you're going to have to pay tuition and related fees, and you're going to have to buy books and material. Well, as we mentioned, tuition, you are covered. Those are considered not covered. Covered means qualified expenses. However, books and material related to your courses are covered, are considered qualified expenses under the American Opportunity Credit. You also have to live, you might live on campus, you might live at home, which is room and board. Room and board are not eligible for both credits. Why? Because regardless whether you are attending college or not, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to pay for your room and board. Expenses paid by a dependent are treated as they, they are paid by the parent. And this is a summary of the qualifying expenditure. Notice Notice that tuition and fees, they qualify under AOC, qualify under lifetime learn credit. Course and material, AOC, yes, not lifetime, not lifetime learning credit. Room and board, they don't qualify. They don't qualify. And remember, most likely if you're a college student taking this course now, you might be saying, I'm not familiar with those credits and I'm a student. Well, yes, because if you are a dependent of your parents, your parents are claiming those credits. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's start by looking at the American Opportunity Credit. Let's first take a look at the maximum amount of the credit. The maximum amount of the credit is 2,500 per eligible student. So you could have more than one student per year for the first four years of post-secondary education. Simply put, this American Opportunity Credit is designed to help you to do what? Graduate, get done with school, finish your education. That's why it's the first four years in college, post-secondary, it means after high school. How is the how is the 2,500 computed? Well, here's what's going to happen. Whatever you paid, they're going to take the first $2,000 of your qualified expenditure, multiply it by 100%, so you're going to get the first 2,000 back not get the first 2000 back you're going to they're going to give you a credit for the first 2000 and the second 2000 dollar they'll give you a credit of 25% of it together 2000 plus 500 you will get a credit of 2500 so this is the maximum credit per student per year for example a parent could have two students one as a junior and the other one as a sophomore or one as a junior and one as a senior a freshman and a sophomore Guess what? For each student, they will get, assuming they paid $4,000 in expenses, and I mean 4000 means the first 2000 get you 2000 the, the second 2000 get you 500 For each student, they will get 2500 Okay. Qualified expenses, as we said, tuition and fees, course and material for the course. You have to be at least half-time students. You cannot be a convicted felon. And there are always limitations, so not all parents would, up, would, would qualify. And those limitations are subject to phase out from year to year. At the end of this recording, I will work an example with a phase out. But basically, 
single, at, you start at 80,000 and you would start to lose your credit up to 90,000. Married filing jointly, they're a little bit more uh, generous. It starts at 160 and ends up at 180. Again, those phase out are subject to change. So if you're looking at this recording in some other year and you see that, hold on a second, uh, those figures, the 80,000 to 90,000 are not correct. Well, yes, because they might change them, but the concept will stay the same. Now you have to know also that the AOC is partially refundable. Just know that it's partially refundable. Otherwise, it's non-refundable. What is non-refundable? It means you will get, they will offset your taxes, but they don't give you a check for the remainder of the credit. If it's refundable, you would reduce your taxes down to zero and anything extra remaining of that credit, they will cut you a check. So let's take a look at an AOC credit, American Opportunity Credit. Homer and Marsh paid 2,800 qualified tuition and related expenses for their son Bart, who's a senior in college. Expenses included $600 for supplies and material. Now, so we're saying inside this 2,800, we have 600 supplies and material. The supplies and material qualify for the AOC and the answer is yes. So how much did we pay? Well, we paid 2,800. How do we compute the credit? Well, the first 2,000, we're gonna get the full $2,000 plus the remainder, the second 2,000, which is only 800, but the second 2,000, you will only get 25% of it. So 25% of 800 is 2,000. Therefore, the maximum credit is 2,200. And here we are ignoring the phase out. We are not assuming any income for Homer and Marsh. So, and this is ignoring any phase out. We're gonna look at a phase out example later. Now let's take a look at the Lifetime Learning Credit or LLC. What is the purpose of this LLC? So why do we have two different credits? As I told you, the AOC, the American Opportunity Credit, is to help you graduate the first four year in college. They want to encourage parents to send their kids to college. They want to encourage kids to attend college. Why? Because if you attend college, you are a more productive member of the society. However, as a government, we want to help you. So that's why they have the AOC. So what happened after you graduate? Because if this AOC credit, if this credit is for your graduation, what happened if you want to earn a postgraduate degree, go to graduate school, go to law school, go to medical school, or just take courses to improve your job skills, or you want to change career? Well, there's something else called lifetime learning opportunity. So this means it's this credit is available lifetime after graduation. So the purpose is the post undergraduate education. Remember, because the first one is the for the first four years. What is the maximum amount you can get? Well, the lifetime learning credit per taxpayer, so it can be taken per taxpayer, is 20% up to the first 10,000 of your qualified expenses. Remember, the qualified expenses can only be here tuition, qualified tuition. So let's assume you paid 5,000 in in qualified tuition, you'll get you'll get a credit of 20%, which is a thousand. If you paid 15,000, well, guess what? You're only they will stop. They will say 10,000 times 20%. You'll get the maximum of 2,000. You cannot be claimed in the same year as the AOC credit is claimed. So the same student, now be, listen to me carefully. The same students cannot claim the AOC and LLC in the same time. And we'll work, we'll work an example about this. This lifetime credit is per taxpayer, only one student per year. So if you have a parent and they are claiming this credit, they only they could only claim one lifetime credit per their dependent. Usually the lifetime credit, you're not really a dependent, generally speaking. But if you if you are claiming it, you can only claim one lifetime credit. Now a parent could have two students, one person that could qualify for the LLC and another person for the AOC. That is okay. That, that doesn't usually happen, but that's if that happens, what could happen? And if it does happen, that's fine. But the same students cannot have the LLC and the AOC at the same time. That's the point. And remember, you could have multiple AOC credit. So parents could have two kids with AOC and one kid with LLC. That's also fine, but only one LLC, lifetime learning credit. Again, that usually does not happen. People that claim LLC, they are not dependent, but just you need to know the rules. Do, do we have limitations? Of course, it's subject to change. Sub, the limitation is subject to change and limitation, it's on the screen in front of you, starting at 80,000 up to 190. Let's take a look at an example for lifetime 
education credit. Samantha paid 3,200 to attend the cl class at local university to help improve with her job skills. How much of the lifetime credit can she claim before the phase out? Well, if she paid 3,200 times 20%, that's $640. Let's take a look at this example where to see how the both credits cannot apply, apply for the same year for the same student. Let's assume Patrick paid $8,000 of tuition for Maria, his, his daughter, to attend the state university during her first year. Patrick AGI is 68,000, so we're not subject to any limitation. Compute the credit. Well, first we're gonna compute, since Maria is a freshman, first year in college, we're gonna, we're gonna compute the AOC. Well, Patrick paid 8,000, of this, the first 2,000, we're gonna get 100% tax credit for that, and the second 2,000, we're gonna get 25% credit. So if we compute the credit, Patrick will get the maximum credit of 2,500. So remember, of the 8,000, we used up 4,000. We still have $4,000 that we have not used. How about we claim the lifetime credit 20% for Maria, and the answer is, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You cannot claim the lifetime credit and the AOC for the same students. Now, let's assume Patrick had another kid and Patrick paid $4,000 for that other kid as and that other kid is only qualified for the lifetime, then yes, we can get the 20%. But not for Maria, we cannot do that. Different students, yes, same students, no. Let's take a look at a phase-out example. Samantha and Joseph married filing jointly, paid 2,600 of tuition and 500 for books for their dependent daughter to attend State University as a freshman. So since this is a freshman student, first year in college, we are dealing with American Opportunity Credit. They paid 2,600 in tuition and 500 in books. Are books qualify? And the answer is yes for the AOC. So let's assume the couple AGI is 80,000. Well, if the couple AGI is 80,000, the phase out don't start until 180. What does that mean? It means there's no limitation really. The first 2,000 that they paid, they're gonna get 2,000 credit for that. And the, the next 2,000, which is they did not pay, they paid only 1,100, they're gonna get 25% of that, which is 275. Therefore, the total credit is 2,275. Now, let's assume the AGI is 168,000. What does that mean? Remember, the phase out start at 160 for married filing jointly, and it goes from 160 to 180. So there's a $20,000, what we call a range. A range. So they'll start to lose the credit, and once they get to 180, they, the, they're gone. So the range, we call this the range. The range is 20,000. So how do we compute the credit? Well, first of all, they are 8,000 above the phase out because the phase out start at 160, they're at 168. Well, the range is 20,000 because this is married filing jointly. Now for single, the range is 10,000 because it goes from 80 to 90. So the range is 10,000. What do we do? Well, we're going to say is this. They are $8,000 inside the range because again, the range, this is zero, and this is 20, 20,000. This is the range, and the range is between 160 and 180. So what we say, we say, okay, let's see how much they are inside the range. And as they, as they move inside this range, they lose the credit. They are someplace here. They are 40% inside the range. This is 8,000. How did I know this? Because 8,000 divided by 20,000 is 40%. What does that mean? It means they're gonna compute their credit, which is 2,275, and they are going to lose 40% out of it. They're gonna lose 40%. Well, what does that mean? It means they're gonna be remaining with, with 60%. So if we take 2,275 minus 910, the credit becomes 1,360. 1,365. So as they move inside this range, they would lose credit. They only lost 40% of that credit. Obviously, once their income is above 180, once they, get, once they get to 180, they will get zero and starting going forward, they will get zero. So if the AGI is 184, what's their AOC? Zero. They're outside the credit. They don't get anything. But this is how you compute the phase out. And same concept work for the lifetime learning credit. And remember, if it's single, if it's not married, fine and jointly, the range is 
10,000. So remember, when you take what's how much are the inside the range, for example, if this was individual, we'll take 8,000 divided by 10,000, and it'll be there will be 80% inside the range. But this, the you know, this AGI will not work because the range is only 80 to 90,000. But the point is, let's assume they're at 88,000, so there will be 80% inside the range. So just so you know the range will change. What should you do now to learn about this? Go to Farhat Lectures, whether you are an accounting student, a CPA candidate, an enrolled agent, and look at additional MCQs through false lectures that's going to help you understand the tax credit, an important topic on the CPA exam, American Opportunity Credit, Lifetime Credit, important concept. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay